Welcome to the update part of the series where we will learn how to make a really cool and interesting automatic setup by the help of which we can pull a simple MT to derive the animation of any object or multiple objects at the same time. This workflow is so powerful and if you are into animation this can save you a huge amount of time. So in our case we are going to add a 3 edge dagger in the middle of the claw. Give it a simple animation and also a rotating animation for the claw base. Then using this empty controller, we will derive their animations at the same time with just a simple pull. So without any further ado, let's get into the process. For the process, we need the parts that are attached to the claw, which means the IK target that controls the claw, the base, also the claw itself, the rig and the interior parts. Then press the forward slash key to isolate them. Select the IK target in the timeline, delete all its keyframes. Then do the same thing with the rig. So select the rig, press Ctrl tab to go into pose mode and remove all their keyframes. Then open a new window here and switch it into graph editor. Select the IK target and if it has or any other objects have modifiers, remove them. Otherwise, there will be some unwanted animations and that will make our process a bit hard. So that is fine for now. Now with the IK target selected, press Alt R to clear rotation. Then press Alt G to clear location. And I just Simply move it up a little bit. It is not needed just for the visualization. And another point, make sure the claw is open. You can select the rig, press RX to close or open it. This will make the process a bit easier. The next step is to add the dagger. If you want to use mine, the link will be in the description. It comes as a blend file. So simply copy paste it into your project. And here it is. To adjust it in place, Select the base, press Shift S, choose cursor to select it. Then select the dagger, press Shift S, selection to cursor, which will set it exactly on the 3D cursor. It is so small, so press S to scale it up until it fits perfectly in place. Something like that could actually do. Now with the dagger selected, press Shift S, choose cursor to select it. Then Shift A in the empty at a single arrow. If you think it is a small, don't press S to scale it up. This will present some problems later. Instead, right click, choose adjust empty display size. Drag your mouse to increase its scale. Then let's enable transform tool. Hold down the control key, rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. So I should scale it up a bit more. Now this is fine. Press F2 and rename it to dagger controller. Select the dagger, shift select the controller, press Ctrl P, choose object, keep transform. So that the controller now controls the dagger. Now we can go on with making animations for them. Let's start with the base. But before that, first select the claw, the rig and all the interior parts, not the dagger. Then finally shift select the base to make it the active object. Ctrl P, object, keep transform. So that the base controls these parts and any part that you pattern to the base will actually rotate. So keep that in mind. Now make sure you are at the first frame. Press K and make a keyframe for rotation. Then go to frame 100. Then here in the object panel, we should tweak the Y rotation so that the base will rotate clockwise. So whatever value you have here, just type down minus 360. It means an entire round. So press K to make another rotation keyframe. By the way, for the time being, let's set the ending frame of the timeline on 100. This will make the process easier. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's nice. The next one in the row is the dagger. So select the dagger controller and make sure the CTI is at the first frame. 
move it back until you cannot see the dagger anymore. Something like this. Press K to make a keyframe for location. Then go to frame 100. Then go to frame 100, move it forward, place it like so until you have a reasonable look like this. Press K, make another location keyframe. Again, go to the first frame. This time, make a keyframe for rotation. Go to frame 100. And again, we should tweak the Y rotation. But this time, we want to rotate it counterclockwise. So whatever value you have here, just type down plus 360. And then make the final keyframe. Let's take a look. It already looks pretty cool. However, to make it better, select the dagger and head over to the modifiers panel. Then in the deform, give it the simple deform modifier. The type should be set on twist and axis on Y. Now using this angle property, you can twist the dagger looks much more fascinating. So now we get to the most important part of the process where we add that controller which drives the animations of the other objects. But before that, making this workflow with all the tips and tricks took me a huge amount of time to figure out. So please do me a favor and give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because more and better are on the way. Now to derive the animations of the other objects, we will use another empty. So shift A in the empty, add a sphere. Move it forward a bit for the time being, we will adjust it later. Press F2 and rename it to anime controller. Now we can assign the animations. Let's start with the base. But before that, there is a very important point here that can significantly help us prevent a huge amount of problems. So switch this window into dope sheet and set it on action editor. So this is the action or the same animation of the base. We should remove its action. But before that, enable the fake user property. It means even if this action is not assigned to any of the objects, it will not be removed. It will remain in the project. And that is pretty important. This took me one month to realize. Then simply remove the action. Let me go back. Here you can see we have keyframes. Don't delete the keyframes because if you do that, you actually remove the entire animation, which means no rotation for the base anymore. And since we have keyframes, you can adjust or change the animation at any time that you like. And this is a really powerful and totally procedural process. So let's remove the animation. Now with the base selected, head over to the constraint panel. And from here, give it the action constraint. Now you get the idea of why in the dope sheet, we set it on action editor. And here we have a bunch of adjustments to make. For the target, as you can already guess, Pick the anime controller. The mix should be set on after original aligned and influence on one. Then we get to the target setting. We want this controller to drive the animation of the base whenever we move it on this direction, like this. So to do that, switch the transform orientations into local. We want to pick its local axis so that if we move it or rotate it, we can always use that very same axis. Then pick the location tool so it is the Y axis. It's local Y axis. You may still ask, what is the local axis? So if I rotate it, you see, it keeps its local axis. Later, you will understand why we do that. Just wait and see. So we should set the channel on Y location and the local space of the target. Let's get to the action. Here we should pick the animation of the base, but because we have so many different objects that are animated inside the scene, it is a bit hard to find it. And if you too have a bunch of animations in your scene, you will face problem finding it. So to make the process easier, let's bring up the non-linear animation panel. Make sure the base is selected, then enable only show selected. So that it will only show the animation. So double click on it and rename it to base rotation. 
so that now we can easily find the animation. Our animation starts at frame one and ends at frame 100, like we had in the timeline. Now, if we give it a shot, it doesn't work. That's because we have to adjust the range of the movement of the target. In most cases, we only need to tweak the max value. It mainly depends on the scale of the object. Well, the object that we have is not that small. So something like five could actually work in our case. Different scenes, different objects, different values. You have to play around with it. The first time I made it, I had to set it on 0.5 because it was so small. So I realized that the scale has a huge effect on this max value property. But anyway, after 10 seconds, you will find a good number. Now, if we give it a shot, yeah, it is working. But let's say we want to adjust the location of the controller. We don't want it to be inside the claw. Then what should we do? Select the controller, press Ctrl I to invert the selection. It means the other objects are selected. And simply press G, move them back. As easy as that. Now give it a shot and just enjoy. As easy as that. But again, worth mentioning, it took me a huge amount of time to figure it out. Now let's get to the dagger and this could come a bit tricky. So select the dagger controller, first get to the dope sheet, rename its animation to dagger movement. Then get to the dope sheet, enable fake user and then remove the action. Now let's head over to the constraint panel and give it the action constraint. The target will be the anime controller, channel by location, target, local space of the target, then from here, pick the dagger movement animation. If the dagger gets dislocated, which could happen to every single object, simply select the base, shift S, cursor to selected. Select the dagger controller, shift S, selection to cursor. Then press R, X, and you may notice it is not working properly. That's because it has a constraint that is being controlled by this controller. To fix that, set the pivot point on 3D cursor. Now R, X, Rotate it by 90 degrees, as easy as that. Then simply move it back until you cannot see that anymore. Our starting frame was one and ending frame was 100. Finally, the range. It should match the range of the previous object, which in our case was five. Let's give it a shot to see how it works. Yeah, I really like that. I just could simply play with it the entire day. And believe me, I did that actually <laughs> the first time that I figured out how it works. And now you can actually imagine how powerful this workflow is. You can add a hundred objects with hundred different animation, hundred thousands. And by using one simple controller like this empty, you can control all of them at the same time. And this is really amazing. And let's give it an icing on the cake. Make sure the controller is selected, then in the item tab, Lock the X and Z location, all the rotation and also all the scale axes, so that the controller can only move on the Y location. So you just simply press G and move it. This is really amazing. I really like that. Here there is a catch. If we select the IK target and move it, you can get the idea. So select both controllers. Then finally shift select the IK target to make it the active object. Control P, object, keep transform, and I knew this would happen. So simply select the dagger controller, shift S, selection to cursor, then rotate it by 90 degrees, move it back, and this was the last time it got dislocated. Let's give it a shot, yeah, yeah, it's totally fine. Now again, press the forward slash key to exit the isolation mode. Select the IK target and let's move it up. Uh, set the pivot point on individual origins. Now we can notice a minor issue. The dagger has poked out of the arm and it is totally visible. 
To fix that, we are going to use the shader editor. Believe me or not, we are going to fix it with its material. And yeah, we should tweak the material of the dagger. So let's bring up the shader editor, then make sure to select the dagger. And this is the material of the dagger. And it doesn't matter what material it has. This process is applicable to any sort of materials. So to start, add a mix shader, drop it after the main material. Make sure it is plugged into the first shader input. Then for the second input, add a transparent node. And here comes the most important part, which is the factor. For that, we will use the gradient texture. Plug color into factor. Then press Ctrl T to use the node wrangler add-on and bring up these two nodes. And instead of generated, choose object, which means we can add an object to control the reveal. So select the base, press Shift S, cursor to select it, then Shift A in the empty, add a circle. Let's adjust it in place a bit more, something like that. The scale of it doesn't matter at all. Press F2 and rename it to Dagger Reveal and parent it to the IK target. Now select the dagger. And here on the texture coordinate node, you can see there is a property called object. So as you can already guess, for the object, pick the dagger reveal. I'm not sure if I select it, yeah, dagger reveal. Let's plug the gradient texture into the material output to see what is going on and isolate the dagger. So we have black and white areas. The black part will be visible and the white part will be hidden. So we should adjust it the way that when it passes the circle, it becomes black, which we can simply achieve by tweaking the rotation on the mapping node. And in our case, we should adjust the Z rotation. So if we set it on 90, there you have it. Let's plug the mix shader into material output, exit the isolation mode and give it a shot to see what is going on. So here we cannot see the dagger anymore. And if we move the controller, there you have it revealed. What could be better than that? I really like this workflow. It is amazing. I actually enjoyed making it and it actually bothered me a lot because there was a lot of problems that had to be solved, a lot of tips and tricks that I had to figure out. And finally it is here. So this was the final episode of the Robotic Bird series and I hope you have enjoyed and also learned so many different things. And for the next series, we are going to have the Stalker Clear Sky series, which is really amazing and insane. We are going to make an entire scene, an entire world from absolute scratch. 